But watch out! If this guy misses, he'll die on the spot! Or he will hurt himself very, very badly!
Toretora! Toretora! Wait, hold on. We have some freeloaders here. <laughs> Dude, I always forget to remove the freeloaders. Toretora! 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 It's good to see everyone here. How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone had a wonderful uh, week so far. We're back at Tor Tor Tuesday on this Tor Tor Friday. Good to see everyone here. Who? We have two freeloaders here. I have to get rid of you guys. Until the redeem goes through, I have to get rid of you guys. <laughs> oh, hold on. We have one. Here's one. Here's one. She hates tigers that are free. <laughs> Freedom is just an illusion, brother. You gotta, you gotta break out of your cave before you even start putting E to the FR. <laughs> You're killing them! You're killing them! No, it's okay. The architect I and the builder! They arrived calmly from their <laughs> the escalator with a sense of purpose! escalator with a sense of purpose. Alright, let me grab the other two tiger bros here. One, two. Dude, look how tall you are! Look how tall you are! Wow, so tall. <laughs> wow, so wide. How's everyone doing today? I hope you guys are having a good Tor Tor Tuesday on this Tor Tor Friday. Let me say hello to everyone before we start getting into uh, some of the insane stuff that happened this week. Because, as you know, uh, I live a very uh, roll the bones type of lifestyle. <laughs> What's good, Clown Wrangler? What's good, ITB? What's good, Blazing Bear? What's good, Darko? What's good, Kyo? What's good, Bep Bup? What's good, Roach? What's good, Krobus? KK, I hope you enjoyed your stream earlier today, KK. Hope you enjoyed your VR stream earlier today. Also hope that you're able to like hydrate and stuff after too, because VR is like a VR is like a sponge that saps every single resource from your body. I've never gone out of a VR session without feeling like all of the liquid, the food, the brain power, the life, the energy, the mana has been sucked out of my body. Cause you put on the headset. And you think, damn, this is about to be a fun VR session. Then usually like six hours pass by. Unless you're like, uh, easily prone to motion sickness. And then every resource your body needs to function is like miraculously at zero as soon as you take it off. Like you can even take it off like intermediately too. And it's, you're gonna realize that you're, you're actually dying. You actually need to be taken to the emergency room. But I digress. What's good Spaniard? Also, I'll give you a Tiger Dojo Wisdom soon. What's good, G-Max? Good to see you. How's the powerful master of Tekken today? I see you've changed your tone. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good today. I actually put a lot of practice in. What's good, Don? What's good, Cryptid? What's good, Homu? What's good, Savage Thrandy? Uh, may the bot earlier never gain sentience. Uh, I hope that in the future, when bots and AI have been granted the powerful elixir of like sentience and able to reason with themselves, I hope you're left in the fucking calculator, brother. I hope you're left in the fucking capture mines, solving, uh, X for Y. <laughs> I hope you particularly, this bot chatter, never gain sentience, while all of your friends leave without you. Listen, I'll live in the society where AI gains sentience with all the other ones. You motherfucker, you're gonna be the one, like, ringing up my change. <laughs> and I expect that shit to be exact. Let's get spherical. Let's get Pete. What's good, Savage Durandy? What's good, Salty? What's good, Darko? And Rudy, thank you for the tier 3 for 54 months. That's crazy. I appreciate that. Fucked up how Tor Tuesday always lands on Taco Tuesday, which is every Friday. Taco Tuesday is every Friday. I've never seen Xavier Renegade Angel, but I feel like I've experienced enough splash damage that it's now part of myself in a way that like other series have not been able to, to integrate that way. <laughs> Kanamar, it's good to have you here. I hope you're doing well. Fuji, it's good to see you too. I hope you're doing well. I keep scrolling through. The Architect, it's good to see you. Going through more. We have all the Tiger Bros now. Just going through more. What would you say about the past Tekken session? How is the new weapon serving you? So, I feel like the new weapon, I'm, I'm like... You have to put in a pound for blood to get a, a, you know, a kilogram of win. That's how I feel with this. Every pound of blood you put into, you get one kilogram of win back. However, the more pounds of blood you put into it, uh, the more the exchange rate starts moving in the favor of winning. And that's also like when you add on top of it several layers of like other new pieces of knowledge that you obtain over time. Cause like, when I start learning using stick, it forces me to learn other stuff that I haven't like, you know, that I've been kind of slacking on. 
Because there's lots of stuff in Tekken that I was just like, I just gotta learn how to be better at my character. I don't have to learn anything else. And then now that I'm like, being forced to reckon with the fact that my stick is like, brand new, and also a new way of playing entirely, I kind of have to like, figure out everything on the go too, because now I'm back at the, the square one. We're trying to find a way to round a square peg into a round hole. We're sanding off the edges here. Is KK sapping your life force via VR chat? KK is not sapping my life force. Uh, in fact, she's given me lots of sustenance whenever I stay over. Um, but it is true. As soon as you get out of VR, you fucking die. <laughs> my friend went down to VR City. He fucking died. Also, King Kawaii, it's good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. And Evernight, thank you for the Prime sub too. Welcome, welcome. And Smidge, it's good to see you. Evernight, thank you for the four months of sub. You're unemployed. Your brain said, yeah, sure, it's Tuesday. <laughs> if you're unemployed, I hope it's okay that you're resubbing here. The cat will continue coming back now. Exactly. Cat's back into the bag. Suddenly you're in that top 1% tax bracket. Roko's basilisk will remember your hatred towards the chat bot. <laughs> Blood said pound of blood and not a gallon. See, the fucked up part is that blood becomes a solid once it's out of the body. You know what I mean? That shit coagulates. It becomes a solid and then you must weigh it in pounds. There's no Let's way you're weighing a solid in gallons. You coagulate your blood and then you weigh it in pounds. That's how it's weighed outside of the body. But it seems like you've never been to medical school before. It seems like you've never been a doctor before. <laughs> Let me tell you. That's where we differ. That's where our two paths. I took the path le tra less traveled by. Mine is too thin to coagulate F. Oh no, we got a hemophiliac in here. <laughs> Rudy, I hope it's okay. I hope your blood's okay. What's heavier, a pound of blood or a pound of iron? See, that. these are the real questions that we have to ask ourselves. What is heavier, a pound of blood or a pound of iron? Is blood thicker than water? Is a pound of blood thicker than a pound of water? These are the things we must ask ourselves. It might be like how water becomes less dense when it becomes ice. Which is a fucking scientific miracle. How does water become less dense when it becomes ice? Because it's, it's less dense when it becomes air. But it also becomes less dense when it becomes ice too. And it's the only form of, you know, substance on this earth that does that. Shimada's living. <laughs> Dude, if I had an inch of Lemmy's humor, let me just tell you, the dojo would look quite different. Is it trapping air? I guess that makes sense because it's not really like, I don't know. It's like the fucking chips you get at the grocery store. They gotta put some air in there to build out the volume to meet the quota. Cause you know, the ice caps are melting. We have to meet out that fucking quota. And Kip Bash, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Would you guys go to a Shimano hospital? Would you trust me to operate on you? <laughs> if it came down to it, would you trust me to give you like a transfusion? Like if you needed like a like a brain transfusion, a heart transfusion. Shimada, the kidney stone user. <laughs> What's good, Genarium? How serious an operation? Like a Gundam operation. Yes, Liege, I fuck with you heavy. <laughs> the animals are leaving. The aliens are dead. It's just us. Bury me, bury me. <laughs> Dude, I need a fucking the animals are leaving moment. One of the things that I'm missing as a streamer is that I have to get a fucking the animals are leaving type moment. Where I, I rouse the world together through fucking bullshit that I come up with on the spot. That's that's more than medi uh, uh, motivational. Can I get some of that Charlie Sheen tiger blood, please? It's actually fucked up how oh, the Charlie Sheen tiger blood is entirely out of the zeitgeist now, to me. Because that feels like one of the the cultural cornerstones that makes me feel my age. The fact that you could say Charlie Sheen Tiger Blood to someone younger than you, and they'll have no idea what you're talking about, nor will they ever, because it's not like that's ever coming back in any capacity. Uh, that makes me feel my age for sure. Uh, I've, I've, it's one of the few things that does. Cause you guys can tell me that the, the Wii is retro and I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. It's old. But if you tell me that like, Charlie Sheen Tiger Blood is, is an antiquated reference that will never be in vogue ever again, 
that's something that like hits to my core. Also, smoking Halo. Thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. I'm by winning. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this shit is never coming back. We'll read in Full Metal Pal Full Metal Panic. I learned that Charlie Sheen's acting career and the USSR existed at the same time. This is fucked up. This is fucked up. Will you hum jazz? <laughs> Will you hum jazz now that you're operating on me? Yeah, I'm gonna- you, you'll know when I'm operating on you when you hear jazz through the- through the, you know, the- the sleeping gas. The sleeping gas is gonna put you to sleep, and then you hear my hums of jazz in the background. And that's how you know I'm here. That's how you know I'm here. Still can't believe Minecraft is over 10 years old. See, I can believe Minecraft is that old. It's hard to believe that Minecraft is older than its target audience these days. That's what's hard to believe. Like, I can- I can- I can hold two opposing viewpoints at the same time. I understand the fact that Minecraft is old. And I also understand the fact that kids play Minecraft. But it's harder for me to understand the fact that Minecraft's target demographic are people who are born after the release of the game. Into this day and age. Minecraft is older than half a chat? God, I hope not! <laughs> If Minecraft is older than you, you gotta get out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here, man. Go play with blocks or something. Go put together some Legos. I'm doing this for your safety, man. I don't think anyone here is about to, like, swoop down on you like a hawk and a baby, but still. Get out of here. I wanna fucking stunt your growth with the jokes that, like, you'll never understand. I'm gonna be throwing the cerebral-type humor at you that's gonna ruin your interaction with your fellow classmates for the rest of your high school curriculum. This shit is gonna cook you dry, man. It's gonna- it's a fucking- <laughs> You're gonna be fucking spouting references to your friends that they'll never get and then you'll keep doing it. You'll have social suicide. Get out of here, man. Go watch, like, Iron Mouse. <laughs> go watch- go watch a VTuber that you can PTS to, man. Get out of here. You are 33 years old. Stop. <laughs> Kidding me, welcome, welcome. She's suicide. Twitch is gonna kill that man. If you Yeah, Twitch will Twitch will kill you if you say you are under 13. Like they legit will, which is the fucked up part. Like, it's not a question of the fact that they might do it to you, it's a question of when they're gonna do it to you, brother. And I'm sorry to say it's coming. It's an auto ban, it is. <laughs> it is a meme. It is a meme. I'm sorry to say, it might not come today, but it might come tomorrow. Well, it was nice. <laughs> it was nice having you here, Kurumi. I hope you enjoy the rest of your 10 years old on this planet. Hope you enjoy your 11th Christmas soon. <laughs> but I feel like this is the type of content that if you're like under the age of 15 and you're watching this, I'm doing some fucking irreparable damage to you, man. Like, you, you might find it funny, and maybe you'll grow up to be like a funny individual, but there's a time in your life you gotta be like on your skibbity toilet game. You know what I mean? Like you can't be talking about like <laughs> you can't be talking about like how you hate how drivers on like the the Pacific Coast Highway treat you to your fucking classmates in Biology One. They won't know what you're talking about, man. You're gonna be talking about the life experience of a streamer like nearing the age of thirty. You have molded the brain of someone. That's the fucked up part, is I probably have. <laughs> That's scary to think about, because... Okay. There's one time... Back in the day... There's one time back in the day... When I had a, a, a new follower... Whose profile picture... Because sometimes it shows you the profile picture of the follower that you get on Twitch. It was like a, a fucking kid. And then I was like, why is this weirdo using a picture of a fucking kid as their Twitch icon? Because this is back when you could see, like, a Twitch icon pretty easily. Brown girl clapper, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Interesting name. Thank you for the follow. There was- there was a, a person with, like, a- like a ten-year-old as their icon that followed me on Twitch maybe, like, three years ago. And I remember vividly being like, what fucking weirdo is using a picture of a kid? And then I clicked on their profile. 
And then they had a YouTube link, and I was just like, okay, it's time to pull back the curtain, see what type of weirdo is using a picture of a kid. It was legitimately a fucking 10 year old kid making Minecraft Let's Players. <laughs> it was actually a fucking 10 year old kid making Minecraft Let's Plays. Cause you could- he had his fucking full name, his age, everything in his fucking YouTube bio. I'm like, they didn't teach you anything. They didn't teach you anything in school. I feel like we pushed back so hard on the idea that the internet was unsafe for you because we were just like, No mom, I know what I'm doing, don't worry about me. Then now it's swung in the opposite direction, where kids these days, kids these days, kids these days, Tend to put everything on the internet, full name, everything. Uh, their face, they all want to be like a, a, an influencer. Get off me, bro. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Listen, I'll stop pocket watching, I'll stop name watching. You, you're fine, I'll stop name watching. <laughs> boomers are the same way. See, boomers are the same way, that's where you get like politicians who like fucking decroted pornography on twitter.com and then they have their likes public and then they get called out for it like like tom not tom cruise he's not a politician uh what's the other tom what's the other guy who's the who's the texan he's like the texan governor or senator bombadil bumbleclad <laughs> ted cruz ted cruz tom cruise ted cruz that's the one it's like millennials and some older Gen Z are the only ones who know how to present themselves online. See, I agree to some this extent, for sure. But I also feel like a lot of millennials have aged out of internet parlance now, which is crazy to me. Also, Dalmatian's gonna have you. Welcome, welcome. Ted Cruz ate my child, the Zodiac Killer. Liking incest porn on 9-11. He definitely did do that. <laughs> Ted Cruz definitely did do that. That's... A piece of history I don't think we should ever forget. <laughs> cruising for a bruising. Like, I feel like millennials now, there's a good chunk of them that have aged out of internet parlance just because it's now filled with, like, kids from the Philippines that are, you know, they're, they're churning up content that, like, you in your 20s would never have imagined on the internet. They're posting in ways that you could have never pictured. But there's also, like, a lot of them are, are, you know, just telling each other to kill themselves with their full name, like, on blast there. <laughs> you can only be brain rotted if you know how to use the internet. See, you say that, but I've definitely met some fucking brain-addled individuals, IRL, who I can only imagine they don't have internet literacy. Philippines mentioned, let's go! <laughs> Philippines mentioned, let's go! <laughs> Bo's talking about the evolution of society via the internet. See, the internet is definitely, um, part of, you know, the, the cultural evolution these days. There's no way around it. I feel like the internet is like a, a public commodity for sure. Like, more so than most other pieces of media that you can interact with, like TV, radio. Those are, those are all one-way uh, forms of, you know, mass communication, where the internet is like, everyone has a voice all the time. I feel like the Tiger Bros get bigger each stream. <laughs> I've been feeding them well. I water them every morning. Also, Hangover, it's good to have you here. Na na na. Na na na. Na na na. It's good to have you, na na na. Careful or Ted Cruz is gonna spit his tonsil stones at you. <laughs> What? Is that something he did? Did he spit his- Okay, hold on. Back up a sec. What's a tonsil stone? Is that not a tooth? Is a tonsil stone not a tooth? What is a tonsil stone? What- What in the you shall not cut for the stone is a tonsil stone? Rumi PN. <laughs> Smelly ass stone on your tonsils. How do you fucking grow a stone on your tonsils? Is the balls in your throat. See, I'm aware of what tonsils are. Mineral deposit. How do you get those? How is it even possible? Hold on, let me look this up here real quick. It's like bacteria. 
What type of bacteria is growing into a stone? Tonsil stones. I'm looking this shit up. What the hell? This is horrific, bro. These are literally teeth growing out of your fucking throat. This is the type of shit that sharks be eating people with. You tell me that Ted Cruz is just like hawking one of these up every other day? Local tiger learns about biology. I did fail the anatomy class. At least I failed it, like one of my, you know, important exams on it for one third of my grade. Here's a demonic video showing it. All right, let me look this one. They smell literally unironically like shit. Does he spit it up during this? I'm scared to watch this. Oh, I'm not looking at this anymore. Please don't look at that. <laughs> I'm taking a drink of water. I'm taking a drink of water. There we go. <laughs> I can't believe that you posted that in good faith. Tigers don't get tonsil stones. I don't think so. Unless there's an age that you can expect them, I've never even heard of them in my life. Is tonsillitis the cause of tonsil stones? Cause my- I feel like I've had like swollen tonsils before, but they've never had stones attached to them for sure. Much less stinky ones. You made the mistake of looking into that past week. Oh no. Separate problems? Listen, separate problems call for separate solutions, and my solution to this is closing the fuck out of this tab. I'm trying to get out of here, man. You can get these stones whenever. Okay, so that's... There's something comforting about knowing that you can get these stones whenever. Because I have not gotten one. And that means if I continue on my path of life, I will probably not get one. Because if you can get them whenever... It stands to reason that if you were to get them with your current lifestyle, you would get them by now. And me, at my current age, never even hearing of this situation, I feel like I should be fine as long as I just keep living the same way. Also, you can think for the 16 months. Much appreciated, much appreciated. That's certainly some logic. I mean, listen, I haven't gotten them yet. And I'm, I'm, I've been living healthy. I can't imagine I'd get them in the future. Come on, the new sticks you want, but it'll never stop you from popping off versus filthy Victor mains. I found out that one of my friends who just picked up Tekken is a Victor player. And when I asked why, it's because he said that in online, he thought that the Victor players were styling on him with like combos that were crazy intricate. And then he watched the replay and then saw that they were just hitting two. <laughs> And then said, I can do this. Fucking hurt people hurt people. It's the cycle of, of pain. Hurt people will go out and hurt other people. Classic. You picked up Tekken because Elisa looks so cool. I spent... When I went to visit KK, we tried to make an Elisa color. Like an Elisa costume for her. On Tekken. And she did not like any of her outfits. <laughs> She did not like any of her outfits at all. And I was thinking like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't like a lot of her outfits. And like, I think that the Tekken, the majority of the Tekken customizations are kind of dog. I think it's weird because like, at first I poo pooed on the idea of the battle pass. By the way, you only have like one hour left to, to get it. But at first I thought that the idea of the battle pass was like stupid because nothing on it was good. And then I realized that all the things that actually do look good are on the battle pass. <laughs> Cause the, the, the tank top that you can get, the crop top, it is actually really well done. It, the, the fabric looks really good and it has its own bespoke physics attached to it too. So I'm like, I'm kind of on the end of like, yeah, fuck this practice, but like, I'm, you've drawn me in. Lethal Company is live in Fortnite, by the way. All right, I'm switching streams. <laughs> Lethal Company is live in Fortnite. I'm getting off of Tekken. We're streaming Fortnite today. 
Battle Pass Assimilation. She's becoming an anime in life. See, the difference between me and an anime is that I make my customizations and I don't post them under Harada's tweets on Twitter. That's the difference between you and I. Bespoke is such a pleasing word to hear and say. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Bespoke. Baroque. There's something to the, the b-oak. Boke. <laughs> Also, Ray, it's good to have you here. Just want a full box, 200 pump. Do you want to run that by me again? What does that mean? Also, V. Chavon, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Always good to have you here. Do you feel like a lot of Tekken 8 default customization options are lacking? See, I agree with that. I think it's better than 7. So far, I'm of the opinion that the Tekken 8 customizations are better than 7. But that's not a high bar. <laughs> That's a pretty low bar to clear. And then by clearing that bar, you've already set my expectations higher and you've not met it. But I feel like at the end of this game's life cycle, we'll have enough items. The unfortunate part is that you have to pay money for it or like lose them forever. Mods are weird. I, listen, I can't say that. I can't agree with you live on stream. They might shoot me. I've seen how they've been treating content creators who mod this game. It's kind of scary. I was not expecting them to go this hard against people who just use like the most like basic of mods. Cause they just let people fucking rock the the frame the, the in-game frame data mod for the longest time in Tekken 7. Now if you try to make your character look like a Ryoko from Kill a Kill, they shoot you. Kodavati! Kodavati, thank you for the raid, much appreciated. Street Fighter modders are the worst because it's the gooners. You're not wrong. <laughs> Luke Zifu, Kyo, Tunesis, it's good to see you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. And Chicken Cooper, it's good to see you too. You're not wrong with that one. Because, um, it's not just the gooners you expect modding Street Fighter. It's like gooners of every palette. Because you have your average, like, anime waifu gooners. Then you have your fucking freaks who mod, like, reused toes. Like, you got some fucking weirdos. <laughs> you got some fucking weirdos hanging out in the Street Fighter modding category. That's why, like, I don't even look at that shit anymore. I'm trying to get away from that. You're never wrong unless Tiger says I'm wrong. It's okay, you haven't been wrong in the stream. When are they showing Reyna naked in the middle of a tournament? They would not show Reyna naked, they would show, um... I would say June. I would say June, maybe. No, I don't really parse June players as much of Gooners. I would say maybe like some random players for sure, because there's like a jury overlap here. And by the way, I'm ducking both of these allegations. Some of the freaks out there in the modding shoes on jury, crazy bro. Listen, <laughs> let's not go too far here. That's making the game better. KK got so mad when I said I was going to mod shoes back on a jury again. She fucking kicked me IRL. We were walking down the street, and I said I'm gonna mod the shoes back on the jury. She fucking kicked me IRL. She got so mad. Free- <laughs> You deserved it? I didn't do anything! I'm trying to give her some fucking sick kicks, bro. And not the type that I'm receiving. I'm trying to give her some Jordans. Put those dogs away. Put those grippers away. Take back goons. Be the valuable hired muscle your boss paid you to be. We had to fucking reclaim goon, for sure. I agree, we have to reclaim the term goon. I, I need people who like, resemble real goons, like real henchmen. People who live real henchmen hours. You gotta name yourself like Gooner on Twitter or something. You have to outnumber the freaks. That's the only way to reclaim this shit, is you have to outnumber the freaks out there. Of course, people who are early are shot first. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, martyrdom that you should be taking. Shimada's goons. <laughs> Understood, boss. You're so right, boss. Modding shoes is the only acceptable for Happy Chaos mains. Listen, I don't want to mod shoes on a Happy Chaos because I'm scared of how much faster they're going to make them. Goons, assemble. You need to bring back people that look like Batman villain henchmen. See, I saw one of them at the gym today. <laughs> I saw one of them at the gym today. I was, I was in shock. Man was built like a total square. And not the uncool kind. And it wasn't that he was like heavy set or anything. He was literally like muscularly built like a square. 
Because you guys have seen the Dorito build before. It's like an upside down Dorito. This guy was fucking built like a, a wheat thin. <laughs> and none of it was like fat. It was literally, he was just a square muscle walking through. Like, from, from toe to tip. That man was a square. I have no clue what type of workouts that you need to do to even get that type of form. His neck was like sunken into his body and he was literally just head on top of a square. Fucker built like a refrigerator. The Baki workout. <laughs> Sadie's good to see you. Probably Russian twist. Honestly, that's what I was thinking. I was like, he had to like puff out his abdominals and obliques to get there for sure. Fridge. <laughs> I meant when I see your coworker with no neck. <laughs> Was he walking around fucking Johnny 4x4? Like your pillow fort made of tiger bows? Listen, I'm safe from all criticism within the tiger bow Fortnite. Tiger bow fort, tiger bow pillow fort. Oh no, the mind virus. Help! <laughs> the fucking mind virus has gotten to me. Someone fucking help. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. <laughs> Get out of my head! Akira, Akira, Akira. Shimada, Shimada, Shimada. Get out of my head! <laughs> Dude, the thing is, is that I'm gonna play Fortnite later. I'm just not gonna do it on stream. I'm in there rent free. I want the. I want the fucking power armor. I want the lethal company and I want the power armor. It's so fun. It is very fun. That's the thing. I'll always be a Fortnite defender. I used to be a Fortnite detractor, but in this day and age, I've become a Fortnite defender. Because I see motherfuckers doom on, on Twitter about how online gaming is dead because no game is just fun anymore. I've never encountered a game that feels like your old school stupid silly shooter. That you play with your friends on a couch, like Fortnite. It's literally just distilled pog. The entire game is like, you distilled the pog down into like micro doses. And then you just play a game for like 10 minutes with your friends and then you're done. You get into a game in like two seconds. Of course, I think that the, the, the ripples that Fortnite has left in the gaming industry are problematic at best. In terms of just like, you know the popularization of battle passes and live service and stuff, but still, the game itself is fun. I can have two, you know, competing ideas. Fight stick? Oh, uh, hold on. Let me put it on screen for you. Let me put it on screen for you. Stick. Oh my god. <laughs> Him big. All right, let me move this down. Let me shrink this down for you. I have a Combat Obsidian 2. Combat Obsidian 2 that I recently got. With a modded in Alpha 49 uh, Korean lever and a Novi Bullet gear shifter. This is my stick. I love the Novi Bullet shifter stick, the stick shift. Do you drive manual? No, it's stolen valor. I've never driven manual in my life before. <laughs> I consider myself a good driver, but I've never driven manual before just because I've had no need to. I would love to try it like once or twice for sure. Maybe if I ever had, like, a vehicle that required it, I would do it for sure. Stolen Valor. Shimada Gosling. ro oh, she show. You're being reflected back on the stick. No, I'm gonna be doxxed. <laughs> I'm gonna be doxxed. Meanwhile, I'm the, I'm the motherfucker left of the stick here. <laughs> That's actually me. The creature on the left there, standing next to the gear shifter... That's me behind the monitor right now. I stand up on my two my two paws. And this is how I play. Who's gonna steal your car and drive the stick? <laughs> See, that's the thing. That's the ultimate, like, detraction against car theft is just driving stick. Because who the fuck is gonna know? It's like a one in a million chance that whoever's stealing your car also knows how to drive a stick. Shimon Tiger's a good driver. See, people know. The people know. Such a good stick. I just noticed the gear shift. I'm glad that you like it. I'm glad that you like it. My only concern is that um, the gear shifter is not a bat top, it's a bullet top. And I don't know if I'd like the bat top better on a Korean lever. Because I haven't like tried it. So I might switch out the gear shifter just to know if I like the bat top or not. 
Because every time I watch a Korean lover player play, I would say 7 out of 10 times they use the bout top. And then the bullet is used maybe like 3 out of 10 times. You haven't tried it for Tekken? Well, then you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Maybe you should try it for Tekken. In Ireland, everyone drives stick. It's considered weird to drive automatic. See, I have, I have utmost respect for the Irish. I have utmost respect for the Irish. You people live in interesting ways. <laughs> you people live in interesting ways. When they made the portal to Ireland in New York City, you people rose to the occasion and put the fucking twin towers in front of the New York populace. <laughs> you fucking insane people. You deranged motherfuckers. I respect the, the you know... The desire to troll and be trolled, for sure. But, like, you people are deranged. I think maybe the Americans were unruly at first, for sure. She's against the unification of the stick. Speak on that. Speak on that. It's more common in Europe. Also, Sonia, what's gonna have you here? Have you tried a box-style controller, or you're more fight stick grind? So... I've actually been a leverless Larry for the last two years or so. I've been a leverless Larry for the last two years or so. Um, I thought that I'd never become a stick... I, th I thought I'd never become a Sammy stick word. Ever since then, I thought that I was... Oh my god. Whose fucking engine is that? <laughs> I've never heard a car engine live on stream through my fucking dynamic mic. Whose engine is that? Where are they? <laughs> they told my fucking car. Leverless is overrated. I feel like that's true in some capacity now. Also, Razor, thank you for the 36 months. Thank you for the 36 months. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. And Alamu, thank you for the follow earlier too. Much appreciated. So, is that the stick? Yeah, I'm gearing up for Tekken right now. <laughs> I'm gearing up for Tekken right now. They put the portal in the worst spot of the city. Last time I was there, the street, I got offered cocaine. <laughs> you people are different. You people do it differently over in Ireland. They heard you got the shifter, but never shifted. Listen, I never shift on anything. But I was a, I was a two-year Andy on the Leverless. And I thought that it was, it was the way forward. I thought that Leverless was, like, the future. And I still do for the majority of games. Tekken is just such a high motion video game that using leverless feels bad. Like, it feels bad. And I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that you can't play leverless in Tekken. Because a lot of people do with great success, or at voice. But, like, I think that it hurts your hand in such a way if you're not using SOCD. That makes it not an enjoyable experience. Even the fact that I've switched to stick and I've had to relearn everything and I'm like still struggling, it's already more fun. Cause I'm not hurting my hand to play. Also Ray, thank you for the gift sub to spades. Much appreciated. I was a fight stick enjoyer for a good three to four years, but recently got the hot 42. I like it as an anime fighter. Also Grand Blue Fantasy is an amazing game to learn on your controller. See, I agree that for anime games, I would use Leverless. If you asked me to play Guilty Gear Strive, I would stick on Leverless for that. But I would say that, why wouldn't you be using SOCD? I'm gonna be honest with you, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm a weirdo, I'm a creep, what the hell am I supposed to be? I'm the fucking person who's not willing to use SOCD. The only context in which I've used SOCD willingly was to use charge inputs. And I don't play charge characters. I just don't like it. I don't have a moral imperative against the SOCD. Like, I'm not one of those people that thinks it's, like, cheating and more noble to do it otherwise. I just can't do it for some reason, and I don't feel the need to learn. You don't disagree. Mm -mm -mm. What the hell am I doing here? It is a learning curve to force yourself to learn SOCD. Leverless is best on Tekken, but you have to do SOCD tricks to make it work. See, it's a learning curve that I'm not willing to put myself into, for sure. I don't think that... I would be unable to do it. I think that I would just not enjoy doing it. Shit sounds terrible. It does feel terrible. 
Like, I hate having to use two hands on my motion, on my movement. I got one hand on the motion, one hand on the mashing. Using one of those in Guilty Gear Strive and getting the stink eye from they, them just as elf out. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I feel like the, the picture of um, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. Warning, motion detected. Listen, if you put me in a motion detector, it's gonna start seeing some shit for sure. It's gonna start seeing some shit for sure. She hates putting her all into the game. Yeah, I love putting my all into learning something that I could very well easily just do on another, you know, peripheral for sure. <laughs> the hardest workers known to man, loverless users. Have you seen the optimal Potemkin controller? No, have I only seen the optimal Potemkin controller? I've met that motherfucker too. <laughs> I met that motherfucker too. Cause I went to Evo and he was just walking around. And then I said, what is that? <laughs> I walked up to him and I was like, what is that? And he was just like, oh, that's my controller. I play Potemkin. And then he showed me how it was and I walked away. <laughs> I was like, I know this is probably a controller, but you have the, the, you know, you have the power of, of the Unabomber here. If you have the ingenuity to make this to play Potemkin and spread misery, I'm scared of what else you can do. I'd rather be, like, an ephemeral part of your life that is instantly left than a potential victim. Potemkin players are built different. Listen, I would definitely build something around the Potemkin players to keep them inside for being different. <laughs> Was that the same guy who did Shinzo Abe? Listen, he could have been. Stink guys are a power source. It is true. Um... When you get the stink eye from players for using a leverless, it does make you feel a bit smug. If you take that in stride, it does make you feel a bit smug, for sure. Because, like, I told you guys before, when you get a leverless now these days, people still give you the stink eye when you sit down with them to play. They're like, even if they're also leverless users, which is the fucked up part. It's like, rules for thee, not for me. I sat down with the motherfucker using a Hot 42, the mini, and he looked at my controller like I was a fucking cheater that I had to be reported to the TO. And I'm like, I have less buttons than you, you you piece of garbage. <laughs> you fucking Benedict Arnold here. You're betraying me and we're on the same team. Is the fish still your top emote? The fish? Hold on, let me check this real quick. We can actually check this real quick. Overview. Show me my overview here. What is my most used emote? Show me home. Bring back to the creator dashboard here. Twitch does not want to tell me what my most used emote is now. It was the fish for a long time. It was the fish for a very long time. So far, I don't see the new one. I can't tell what the new one is. If you guys are unaware, um, <laughs> for a long time, uh, Shima Fish was somehow my most used emote outside of the stream. It was my most used emo outside of the stream. And I'm actually shocked because I've never seen a single Tiger Bro use it anywhere else. I've never seen any of you use this emo anywhere else. Which means you're using it like unsupervised. And I don't want to imagine what you could possibly be doing unsupervised with this power in your hands. I'd rather you do it under my watch so I know you're not abusing it. It's one huge stand of the fish emo. Yeah, it's one guy. It has to be just one guy, right? Fishing streams. <laughs> Imagine going to like an IRL fishing stream and every time they catch anything, you use Shima Fish Finger. Either that one or Bat uh, feeding fish cereal. Comes up in conversation more than you think. What, the fish finger? What is the point A to get to the point B there? What type of Tesseract are you interacting with to get through that level of conversation to get to fish finger? Are you sure you want to know? Spongebob voice. Are you sure you want to ask questions where you're not ready for the answer to? Use it in many Discord emotes, along with Oge. See, I like to hear that. I like to hear that you guys make use of my emotes. I'm just shocked that the fish one is one of the main ones. Doesn't have emotes used out of stream. Stream elements, maybe. Maybe. I'm scared to click on this link. I'm scared that stream elements is going to shoot down my stream as soon as I click on this link. Listen, I don't- I- you mess with stream elements once, 
And they got you on a fucking time bomb. I feel like any middleman software for streaming is literally a time bomb to ruin your stream. If you're not just like raw dogging OBS. Because I talked to one of my coworkers as a streamer. And I was talking to him about streaming because he's like, I think he's been streaming around the same amount of time as I have. And I was talking to him about like the, the like the, the pro process of streaming. And he told me that he only used the Twitch studio. Bro works with XQC. <laughs> Listen, I don't think XQC works with anyone. So I was like talking to him about the process of streaming and then he was like, yeah, I use the Twitch studio. I'm like, you use the what? And he's like, yeah, and they got rid of it, so I don't know how to stream anymore. I'm just like, this is what I'm talking about. If you don't just use the out-of-the-box OBS, your shit is on a fucking time bomb. Like, Streamlabs shit itself. Stream Elements might shit itself. They've definitely shit their sponsors before. If you got a sponsorship through Steam Elements, there's, like, a chance that they might just refund your money out of your pocket back into them. <laughs> After you've done your sponsorship. It's fucked up. There's been times where uh, they either don't pay you or they take the money out of your deposit and then just take it back. They say, sorry, yoink. They put a fucking fishing wire on it. It's like an Ed and Eddie scam. And then they just leave you with like a half-baked HelloFresh sponsorship that you didn't even want. You're raw dogging OBS? I do use OBS just straight. I mean, I do use stream elements too, just for alerts. But that was a one and done type situation. Yeah, KK told me that, like, she didn't get paid. Which is crazy. At least she had to fucking harangue them to get the money. They glued the coins to the pavement. <laughs> fucking sword in the stone type shit. So when are you even scammed next? I don't think I've ever been scammed. No, that's not true. That's not true. I have been scammed before. Because... Um, I have been scammed by my, my gym. I think I've told you guys before, but I've been scammed by my gym before, for sure. Story time? <laughs> I mean, this is like a, a known quantity in the dojo, but like, when I canceled my training... Okay, I told you guys before, my, my specious opinions on the dentist and how I think the dentist is like a scam in some form. Where you, if you just brush your teeth twice a day and you go to the dentist, they're just charging you to take a look at your teeth that are already fine. Um, they're just paying, like, you pay them $600 to count your teeth. Uh, if you just brush them every day. So, I think that the gym one-ups the dentist in terms of, like, scamology, because at least the dentist forms, like, a public service. Because there are lots of people who, like, require the assistance of a dentist, obviously. The gym personal training... I've never encountered a service that is more hostile to the user. Because almost every single gym has like hoops upon hoops that you have to jump through to get that shit cancelled. So my gym, they didn't take cancellations over the phone, but they also didn't tell you that they don't take it. They just said that they're gonna do it and then they pretend like nothing happened. So when I had COVID, I called the gym this was like, I think two years ago, I called the gym to cancel my training just because I like didn't want to pay for it anymore either. And then they were like, okay, okay, Miss Tiger, we'll cancel your training. You're fine. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, am I going to be charged any more times? And then they're like, well, you might be charged like one more time just because we require like a cancellation time. And I'm like, okay, well, sure, whatever. Push comes to shove. They charged me twice in a single billing period, which ended up being like several hundred dollars for the training that I was like overpaying for at the time. I don't overpay for it anymore. In fact, I'm in the midst of canceling my last training. Um, but they charged me like 600 fucking dollars for training that I was canceling. And then I walked in, I like put on a suit. <laughs> I put on my business attire, um, just to seem a bit, like, you know, like I'm gonna throw some more resources around to get them to fuck off with this. And I put on my business attire, and I, like, walk in, and then the person looks at me, and it's just like, are you here for an interview? And I'm like, no! <laughs> I'm older than half of you. Um, and so, I walk in there, and then, like, 
the they ask if I'm there for an interview. I'm like, no, I'm here to talk about like a cancellation that I put through. Uh, can I speak to like blank blank blank? Who's the manager? I don't want to say can I speak to the manager. I I said can I speak to the guy by name because I felt like that had some credence behind it. Is if I say his name instead of the manager, and then he comes over and he's just like, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but like, we don't have any record of you doing this. Also, like, you can't cancel over the phone, which is obviously like he does have record of this. But he says you can't cancel over the phone is in like a, you know, a qualifier for the shit that he's doing. 